Thank you, thank you, my dear. <laughs> I can't tell you what a joy it is to have you moderating again. <laughs> it's a joy to do it. Thank you, Father. <laughs> So today we felt it's the last uh, satsang, no? Before the break, before we break for Guruji's uh, season. And today is also Friday, so it's the Sangha sharing. It's also Saraswati Puja. <laughs> I feel that there could be no better way for me to end this season, if you can call it that, with <laughs> listening to all of you. So for those of you that don't know, what we started doing for the last few weeks is every Friday, we have the Sangha that shares amongst themselves, and the Sangha which uh, asks the questions as well as answers them. I only come in when something, you know, feels like it has to come in. So, we've been calling it TGIF, but I don't know <laughs> that name will continue or not. Also, what I like to do is I like to hear, especially those who haven't really come up and shared yet, and maybe we can hear from them, and then we then we see how it flows. There's no sense here that we are ending something or it's a break or something. Because we're going, we're all going at the feet of Father, so it's all good. It's all good. It's going to be so, so wonderful to have five weeks of daily satsang with Guruji. There can be no better gift in this appearance in that. And Nitya says, what does TGIF mean? Okay, so there's this uh, term called TGIF, which is, thank God it's Friday. It's also uh, a restaurant chain. I don't know whether you, you have it in Germany or not. So TGIF means, thank God it's Friday, and I don't have to hear Ananta's voice for two hours <laughs> or three hours. <laughs> You hear my voice through my children. If there's someone who really doesn't want to come up, they can come up first. Come, my dear, be kind. Namaste, Father. It's, it's been so long since I felt nerves in the hangout, and I thought, I, what, what words from this mouth could be of any use to anybody? And it's it's such a it's such a strange sensation that I knew I I had to be here. <laughs> cat also wants to join. <laughs> yeah, my mom's cat. <laughs> cat friend. Just share whatever feels true to you, whatever feels like it is your direct experience and don't worry at all about whether it's helpful or not because all that is shared from the integrity of direct experience is always helpful. And even if the body is 
seems like a little constricted or seems like it's fluttering a little bit it's okay it doesn't matter at all it means nothing the the words that that are coming up here is that in in my direct experience everything 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 i see is god there's nothing that is not god every shape every form everything whether it could be seen as good or bad or anything all of it is is god and even to say it's god's play that's almost too much of a separation it's it's not just god playing with the world or god playing with the universe it is god it is god there's nothing there's nowhere my eyes fall that that's not god there's nothing i can look at whether with my eyes closed or with my eyes open that's that's not god it is everywhere is everything and if my words are wise or foolish they're still god <laughs> it's still it's all it's all god and every time i remember this because that's all it is it's not a, it's not something that i learned it's something that i remembered every time i remember this i feel blessed beyond measure that this remembrance should happen in this body because that it's 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 what we all are it's who we all are and and just to 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 know that is is riches beyond anything that i could ever hope or wish for and so that all all that's left to say is thank you what else could you say what else could you say but but thank you and to bow your head in gratitude for the, the glory of all of this So the question that usually comes about this is that if it's all God, then what about the wars and the crime and the rape and from from my experience there's nothing to be to be understood in this respect there's nothing that the mind is ever going to make sense of and if you try and make the world into checks and balances you're never going to come up with any kind of balance that's not that's not how i see things from my experience if i if i look for the beauty in the world then that's what i find and if if i'm moved to help in any way then then that movement happens but if i just sit here and say oh this is wrong that's wrong why does this happen then i'm it's like i'm shutting myself off from from the experience of everything and who knows what will move in this body if i am just open you know who who knows what will happen so openness i would say is the key so 
He has a follow up question for you, so my cat. Does the seeing and the reading same? Does the seeing and the reading the same when, when uh, you know, uh, this becomes a, some of this type of untoward incidents become a very personal uh, experience? Can, you know. can you repeat the question? The sound's not great here yes, when you're sure. far away. Um, I, I was just wondering, uh, and uh, again, um, the, this is just some. Uh, 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 what you mentioned, does the scene remain the same if you know this becomes more of a of a personal uh, experience of this type of untoward, you know, like uh, incidents or whatever. You know, when when things are far away, then it, it, it's it's like that. But does it change, or that's that's pretty much it. Thank you. There's there's different. It's like there's different flavors of of experiencing, but always always if if I notice there's there's peace there somewhere and if I notice that peace and then I react from that peace whatever happens is the most helpful possible thing for myself and for whoever I'm with and that doesn't always happen but it's always there it's always available because it's it's the truth it's unavoidable and so if in the moment I notice and react from that place that's what I try to do and that gives me the best possible outcome but that's a work in progress <laughs> does that make sense does that answer your question when I should have been waking up. <laughs> it's going to... Hold on, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's like a fail-safe. You cannot put it on smooth or turn it off. <laughs> I keep yeah. wondering why I love her. Why I because I remember her being in Australia. And you wake up at 4 in the afternoon or... Or in the evening? <laughs> no. It's early then, six o'clock. Very beautiful sharing. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello. 
I'm Jyotika. <laughs> Very nice to see you all. We can't see you so well, my darling, because you're in silhouette. Right. That's worse. That's better. That's getting better. <laughs> yes, yes, getting better. <laughs> oh, there we go. We want to see your beautiful face, Jo. It's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you all as well. Jo, Jo. Jo, became Jo very soon. Hope to see you all in Rishikesh. Although I'll be there in March, first week, first or second week. So. I really, I. It just this feels like such a unmissable opportunity, you know. This uh, like like the company of truth. It just feels like it's such an opportunity. I'm so grateful that I'm here and there's just I just see so much I just see so much peace and so much love and warmth in each one of you. And feels like such an opportunity. And I just I I feel like um, I feel like also thanking you all because I want to make use of this opportunity to thank you all because when I was uh, actually it felt like the body was sick because. You know, when I was not well for a little while ago, and it felt, I felt so, everything felt so held. There was as if like all of these things couldn't touch me, and it's just happening. And even if the body leaves, it's fine. And uh, and I felt like the fever was. An opportunity for me for for me to see that that to that extent, even if the body goes, it's you know even if like a dear one goes, a relationship that I was holding on to with uh, with everything, even if a relationship goes or even the body goes or anything comes and go, I'm still untouched. And I feel like being, you know, Father's grace and Muji's grace and Muji's words and Father's word has really has put that seed, or I don't know how to say, it, in each one of us. And it feels like such an opportunity, an opportunity that I I cannot miss in this lifetime. And I felt, and I felt your love. I felt your, I felt your prayers when I was not well. And thank you so much for that.
is this is very good because you know what happens otherwise is that we say like for example if i say to someone that oh money is not that important and usually the response i get is oh you can say that because you have some money so when jyotika says that it is seen even during these times i remember going to the hospital and seeing her and she was having a good time <laughs> she was absolutely fine the platelets might be close to zero but she was just fine it's everyone around us everyone around her including me who was a little bit concerned and worried but she was just you know enjoying the hospitality of the hospital <laughs> beautiful to see like this so this coming like that when you say that even then the body lost all ability to fight disease and the blood could not clot even then it was clear that what i truly am remains untouched through all of this this is this is when the rubber hits the road this is when it cannot just be mental concepts because very quickly when something comes mental concepts are the first to go you can't even remember anything the mind stops functioning also straight okay? they are the first to go so if it's just mental or conceptual then it will not help but there must be something which is directly recognized it brings us to this place of yes it's just the body if it has to go if that is his will and that is his will You get it. Oh, it is going to ask you to speak. All good at the school. It's all going fine. Yes. Just even if for a few minutes. Thank you so much. Coming all the way. Yes, you know, Jessica. Right now. Hi, Siti. she wants to sing song for you okay good okay no she 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 saying you need to wait she she she's saying you need to wait <laughs> no no not that song you have to sing more no no not that song you have to sing okay you have to sing He doesn't know that. She still doesn't know how to say. Please pick it. People are going to know. Please pick it. Please pick it. Hmm. See. Okay. Ah, Zaya. Ah, Zaya. Ah, Zaya. Ah, Zaya. Ah, Zaya. Oh, uh, so I am. When somebody sings, somebody needs to clap. Okay. Oh, uh, so I am. When somebody sings, somebody has to clap. Oh, uh, so I am. 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 Oh, uh
very clear about what she wants <laughs> yes very very clear um just wanted to share what is the in um being here for past couple of um, months i can say um during the break on so the storm Openings and realizations. I could actually um, see, speak very clearly. I mean, it was all experience, I can say. Um, um, right now, I am in a. I can say right now, I am in a place where I can't speak about anything. I mean to say um, that there is nothing happening, so to say, or I can. Um, I mean, I don't know, Father, if it is um, there is no mind. Definitely, I can see that. No mind, and even if it is there, it doesn't bother. You know, it's not like it bothers or anything. But I'm totally at peace with myself, or I can say, um, there is um, no struggling, no struggling with anything, or um, um. No! No! I don't know what to say, Father. I have no words. Nothing is coming up in the field. I feel that one of the most refreshing parts of the song this that we're all not talking about anything that is happening because 
all of us are now saying that nothing is happening. You see? Why is it so refreshing? Because if you see, usually in the world it's all about so, what's happening? So what's up? <laughs> I remember I used to say what's up and these kids were like, what's up? No, now it's what? What up? <laughs> so it's always the word what's up, you see. And now we are able to come to this point where you say nothing is up. Yeah. So, so for a while it seems like there is nothing to talk about because nothing is up, nothing is happening. You see. And yet, from this nothingness, there is great joy in sharing this that nothing is happening. Because we have been so mind ridden with this happening, happening, what's next, what is going on. And now that is kept aside. Because what is happening in phenomena is not as juicy as it was. And yet great joy can come. So it's completely true to, and natural to have this sense that what do I speak about? Because really nothing is happening. I can't even say that some sort of enlightenment or freedom is happening because it is not a happening. So this non-happening is what this entire sharing is about. Very good. Also want to say that the last couple of days how my body was sick. From the beginning I think the identity was never with the body for me, only with the ego was there. Because body was never, a, I never thought I am the body like that. So maybe maybe these things, the sickness which came up. The last one was the same. No. Um, when these, uh, this thing was going on, suddenly all this thought came about the body dying, you know, because never I felt this kind of sickness before. So, so many thoughts around the body came up. And I felt it as, as you said yesterday, it is an opportunity to see the sickness also. Why? Or maybe, you know, sometimes we are not aware if there is any, um, any items. Because I can see, um, uh, Grace, how it's working on me. All the believe whatever was there, everything one by one, one by one, everything got picked out, you know, totally. And even if there is any belief that was like, you know, it was brought up again, and if, the, if, if, if I had any belief there, then that it would turn to a suffering or some pain or something like that. And the moment that it came, it's gone, it's cleared, it's dissolved. And then like that, all these things had come up, and totally I was getting um, more, um, um, what to say, um, uh, um, more uh, of me, uh, of of myself, totally like that. And then uh, this body, I think I have always been ignoring it or something. And when these uh, uh, the sickness started coming up past ten days now, and last couple of days in the night suddenly I think about it, what is happening to the body, and then start crying or of it. Okay, who's going to take care of all these thoughts and our bodies are coming up? You know, if I watch the body dies, and I mean. I was up for that also, like the total surrender was there for that also. Okay, if, if, if the body dies, sorry, but I'm still here to see this. And I could see the, the all the things going on with the shaking and shooting and all the things. But it was a beautiful experience I had that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to whatever the sickness came up now because it, it took out that, that the last bit of the identity or the belief it was there in the body also. So that's why anything happens around now, or even if it uh, if it is something to do with my body or my daughter, my family, my neighbors or friends or anything, nothing bothers or touches me anymore. It's just a passing cloud like that. So it was beautiful experience I had. Only after I spoke to you yesterday, I, I took it very deep, and then I realized it. Today morning was intense suffering. I still had to go to the doctors. I went to the doctors and all. But I'm fine now. But there is no more that um, that stickiness to the the body now. I think I feel. But it's beautiful. What I won't say it's beautiful, but I won't say it's not beautiful. Also, 
I'm in a, I think the neutrality word would be the right word to use it because I don't feel like I have to share. I don't feel like I, have, I don't have to share. I, I don't feel any spirituality, but I don't feel I'm in this world also. So I'm in between these two, I can see that. At the same time, I'm, I'm told to be happy and peace at myself like that. So that's why I, some in between I had stopped coming to the satsang or maybe the laptop also. It all worked out so well because I was feeling that there's a test for me to see if I'm really able to uh, go back because in between, when the laptop was not there, in between so many things came up, you know, all the um, the mind and the things, everything came up to see if I'm going to hold back or uh, go back to the mind. But it was not possible. I was holding my ground very still there, and and it just it just passed off. The moment when when I knew I'm still here or, or I'm holding to, or, I, or I, it's like I, I'm firm in my what I'm, you know, the word I don't have to use properly, but I was very still, you know. No matter what came, like the storm came, I was like the rocks in the, in the on the shore, you know. No matter how many waves hit the rock, it was still still like that. I, I could see that because I literally I had so much of fear and everything which was coming apart. And then all of a sudden, the moment I was seeing this, everything just like a wave coming and going just washed off back to the sea, you know. And I'm still here and nothing happened. And this is all beautiful which is happening. I knew that. So I still don't know where I am, what I'm doing, nothing I know. I don't even know how I'm speaking also. Sometimes it's, it wonders me how all these things are happening. But I don't, actually I can't describe what I actually I am, you know. And uh, This is how it happens, Father. I'm just in silence. That's it. I have no words to say anything. <laughs> I don't know where I am, what I am, nothing I know, Father. I don't know anything. I actually don't know anything. I can't speak anything. And this is sometimes feels a little frustrated. You have to communicate, you have to say this. It's like Oh, I don't have the words to say, but this, this, what it is, it can be only experienced and enjoyed. It cannot, you cannot share this. I mean, share isn't this not like how you share things, but this is a different way. It's all your great father. I can, I can. It, I'm like, I always felt like this. I'm like the attention. One thing, like you say, no one thing of the one end of the attention is attached to awareness, like that one. Part of me is attached to you all the time. I can't get away from you, no matter how much wandering or whatever happens. But still, I come back to you. I have no idea what that connection is, but it is so grateful, so grateful that I found you, Father. No words to express the gratitude and love for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So sweet, my dear. Good. Don't you say? Yeah. So, about The question is about, I'll repeat because they can't hear you. The question is about pursuing the truth. I'm just getting to whatever I have. It's, I don't know what it is. Maybe you can share directly. So, um, I'm also trying to figure out what the question is, but it's come up, so I just wanted to share. So, um, so when I 
when I met Muji ji, it wasn't all Ramana. When I went to Ramana Ashram, it was never an intent in my heart that I wanted to meet uh, um, my guru or you know I wanted to meet anybody. It just happened, and then you know I had to meet, and then I met you. So it just happened so naturally. But there came a point where um, I started pursuing the truth, like was going after it, almost like something it something it, that I'm trying to achieve, you know, and the. Uh, and soon it became very heady. It became too uh, too much. Even though there was peace, our peace that I was experiencing because of being in the sangha, but also at the same time there were a lot of concepts that were building up, and everything became very boxed. So I had to either say from this box. If I'm not saying from this box, then you know I'm not Progress. progressing, or I'm not in alignment with the truth. And soon that broke. And uh, I feel like it was just your grace that you know that the whole thing broke apart. And very naturally, I didn't even not I mean nothing was done uh, consciously to break it, but it broke. And now there is a space where it's everything's like just sort of naturally happening, and uh, like a seeming I don't know if I can say it like that, but after all of these things, it seems like there's not. Um, what I used to feel used to be very, very hard for me to digest sometimes in the phenomenal. It has become very, very easy. So, like, there's no big deal about a lot of things. It's okay. This can happen. That can happen. You know, it's it's fine. Ultimately, I feel like there's a momentary sort of a you know that uh, uh, whatever the some some things happen, but soon enough it sort of leaves. So I'm wondering now from this place. Like, because I want to be true to this, um, for the lack of, I don't know. So it's just, I want to be true as much as possible. And I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or or what am I doing. I, ha I have no idea because I, sometimes I feel like this itself is leading. Uh, like as if I, there's no control, this itself is going towards its own direction. Uh, however, also there's that, Thing in me that comes sometimes that you know, am I doing something that is, you know, that I'm not supposed to do, or I don't know. All these things sometimes here and there they come up. So it's just that about pursuing the truth, or you know, to how to look at the whole thing. Or I guess I don't know, because uh, this have this has come up on its own, like because of you know whatever experiences. But there's no way to see this. I'm not like. Very good. He says that it just happened, or you can call it grace, that I came to Ramana, I came to Mujiji, and this was without any seeming intent to find the truth. Okay. And what can happen is that once you come to Satsang, there's a recognition that happens of something, but very quickly the mind is co-opted into the project. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Now this is it. Now let's work. And so then the mind is co-opted, and that becomes. And uh, in your case also, especially because. All of you were together in a group and getting what is not getting what's happening. So it can be all these dynamics can come into play. And then the mind is saying, I better live up to you know, some standard which is being set. And it's got you to will not just leave you at.
framework. Father, your um, signal is very bad. Can you hear me? Oh, no. And it was crucial time in Satsa. <laughs> oh, no, man. I wanted to hear your answer. <laughs> If you come back, please try and remember what you said. <laughs> Neither birth nor death pertain to you. You have never been merely a body. It is well known that all is Brahman absolute. The scriptures have stated this in various ways. You are that which is born inside and out. You are sheep.
the true state of freedom is to see everything as one. You are your reality, always the same. You have no body, no man, no death. So what happened here? <laughs> you actually uh, fell out just at the time that was the changeover. So we thought we'd change over while you were out. So, so we can invite them all back in. And uh, we also have um, a new Sangha member called Rivati who's also going to come in. So I just want to keep space for her. But anyone else can come back in. <laughs> and there were two questions, and and you know, I really wanted to hear your answer to Jo. Um, yes, yeah, we, I'm in we the middle of it. Anything. We we okay. heard her question perfectly, and then as you started speaking, we lost you. I'll share. I'll share from the beginning. So what she said was that it was so clear that it was just, there was no intent to find the truth. And yet grace got her to Bhagwan, it got her to Guruji, and it got her to Satsang here. But what happened is because of how it all played out, somewhere the seeker identity started becoming activated as well. And especially she was, because she was in a group which was very, you know, very open with sharing and very open with discussing it and things. And it was seeming like she had to keep up with her friends maybe. That can, that can happen when you're in a group and you come together in a group to satsang and you all feel like you were together, then it feels like something has to keep up. You see? So if one is able to express in this way, and he, and he or she is seems to be the clear expression of the truth. Why is the expression from here different? How can it be different? It must be the same. The mind can create all of these concepts. So, but it is all encompassed in the same seeker identity. And I was saying that even here it so happened that there was this big conceptual framework many years ago and I found that I was just repeating what at that time who my guru was, I was just repeating what he was saying and there was this sense of knowing it and I know it now. 
I got it. There was this sense of that. But the beauty of grace, the beautiful part about grace is that it squeezes all of this conceptual knowing out of you, one way or another. And what happened here is that strong suffering came. And thankfully along with that this question also came, which was that if you know this, if you got it, then what is it that still makes you suffer? And I realized that the concepts, of, as beautiful as they were, were not enough. It has to come from the direct experience of finding that actually there is no one here to get anything at all. And this is there. But very quickly the mind and comes, comes and says, yes, yes, now you got it. You see? Because you want to belong, you want to feel like you're in the Sangha and you're up there or something like this, these things can come. So it's very good that you said that there was this conceptual box which grace itself has broken. And it is very important for it to break. And this is very good because coming to satsang, especially satsang like this, we can hear things like, you are free, you are God, there is no doer. And if these are handed over to the mind, then it can create this box, you see, this framework, which the mind itself then starts using. So when the master also says that, just keep at the inquiry, don't stop yet, then very quickly the mind is to say, but didn't you just say there is no doer now? Why are you telling me to do the inquiry? You see, it can become like that. It becomes a concept that is picked up. You see? But the essence is lost in that. The essence is hidden and the mind seemingly has won for some time. You see? But then life is relentless. You see? <laughs> so life keeps going. And life shows us a mirror. And it says that if it is so clear, if there is no person, then how is this suffering happening? You see, who is suffering? And then there is more integrity in that question, who is suffering? You see, so earlier the answer could have come just because it was heard. You see? But now, even in spite of knowing intellectually some things, when suffering comes, then the inquiry is much more potent. Because you know that these words by themselves are not helping. It has to be more of the direct information. And then you find that, like you said, I find no use of any of these words. Any of these words. You see? So I wouldn't say that as far as identities go, the seeker is the worst identity. I wouldn't say that. But it can be the stickiest identity. You see, because it seems like with this one, at least I'm getting somewhere. You see? Why I wouldn't say it is the worst is because at least it gave us a few things that we could check up on. If the seeker remembered, okay, I'm not the doer, even if it was just conceptual, at least when true inquiry is happening, we referred back to the seeker and said, okay, what is this? I'm not the doer. What does this really mean? Who is here to be the doer anyway? So in this way, that which is the stickiest, most troublesome identity, and why do I say that? Some of you are new, so I must also clarify that for all of you. Why I say it is very sticky is because the words of the spiritual ego are true. You see, the words are true, but it is still coming from the sense of being personal. So then, it could be that, this take, just to take an example, it could be that one that is deeply identified with spiritual ego could be in the hangout, for example, and then we could be talking the same words. You see? 
but I could still be saying, look, don't stop the inquiry yet. Okay? And then that one would say, hey, you don't stop the inquiry yet, you know, <laughs> because we are one. So it can become like that. So usually what happens is that to communicate with words then becomes almost impossible. Then you have to say, okay, yes, grace is taking care of everything. You have to send all blessings possible. And then you find that this spiritual ego also gets... The one thing I can tell you is that it is a great, great burden. I mean, if, if there is a sense of burden, then the burden of the spiritual ego is the worst one and quickly brings us to our needs. So this uh, expression in this way, the suffering that comes as a result of spiritual ego, then very quickly it brings us to our knees and even that is kept aside. And it is actually because it happened here also, I can say that I, I could have made myself very guilty about it and said, see, now you were so deluded and you were just, it was just a sense of specialness and arrogance, which is adding again to this whole thing. So best to just forget everything, everything and start completely fresh. Wait for this plane to fly past. Like it wants to be in Satsang. <laughs> So I can tell you that, and you know this also, because we've spoken about it a little bit, that the most helpless place for the father <laughs> in satsang is not this, not able to actually reach you. Is it? So it can be that this, the conceptual framework itself is so strong that it becomes the defense for the truths to come in. So, and uh, and here also I must say that over a period of time there is a continuous development of, of trust on grace. Okay? So it can seem like I trust grace completely and then Things will happen, and I say, now I trust grace completely, <laughs> and something else will happen. Now I really trust grace completely, yeah. because you know that uh, many of you know this. That initially it was very strong for me also when my children were collectively seeming to leave satsang. It was like, what's happening? What is what is this new sadhana which Guruji has sent for me? So it can it can seem like that. And in the sense that why am I not able to get through? So you know that I sent you something and you sent some Advaita response and I was like, so okay, what's happening now? <laughs> so but then of course this grace plays so beautifully and you can see that it is much better this way. to have gone through all of that and to know that what was spoken in satsang has been here in the heart and what was there just in the mind is completely not helpful and it is the pointings which are shared which eventually have led to this sense that you can even say things like I don't care if the body comes and goes. 
So, okay, the simpler answer to then all of that story is that the same grace that got you to Bhagwan is taking care of everything. Okay? So, in the middle, we can say that okay, I became the seeker. I was in pursuit of the truth, and it really became feverish because you know of whatever circumstances were there. And then there was like a dropping of that entire thing. And yet I find that grace is still working so beautifully. You see, and still I'm here. <laughs> so this grace, if it is bringing Bhagwan into your play, then that same grace is taking care of the realization of the truth as well. So you don't have to pursue the truth because it doesn't need any finding. It doesn't need any seeking. And this which you're finding now and you're finding it with great, you say that I don't have the words to even say now because earlier I could speak. Okay? But now I can't find the words. But this is better, isn't it? <laughs> it's better, isn't it? So the ineloquence which comes is very, very beautiful and can, can be a little confusing also because you feel like when I come to satsang, I see Ananta and he seems to be quite articulate and words come for him, so like that. but there was a long period of time when no words would come for him. So you can play that way where I don't know what to say, I don't even know Consciousness, awareness. I felt that I understood this in the past, but now it doesn't have, it doesn't mean anything to me. I just know that grace is taking care of everything and that I am here. So don't have to pursue anything. Don't have to not pursue also. You see, the trick is that. When, when when I say like that, it can seem like, okay, he said don't come to satsang because he said don't pursue the truth. <laughs> like that. Because then if I'm coming to satsang, then it means that I'm pursuing the truth. Therefore, it's not that. It is not pursuing nor not pursuing. It is the neutrality. And just the seeing of whatever is unfolding. And the mind doesn't know how to do neutrality. <laughs> <laughs> and the wine says, so, what am I supposed to do now? Be neutral? Okay, I'll try. I can't, cannot try. There is nothing that it knows about being neutral. It knows either do or don't do. <laughs> so this neutrality is beyond the mind. This neutrality is just in the witnessing. So what then happens? You drop the sense of should I or should I not? Yes. Whatever is happening is happening. But it's not a project. It can seem like that for some time. That all, everything was moving towards that. But actually even that has to be dropped. Will be dropped organically. When I say has to be dropped, then again it can be like that. I have to drop it. Not like that. It's just Get stuck on its own. Then I have to repeat anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, so in a way, I thought that I had a lot of control over things, um, which is which is like how you said the sense of grace is developing and it seems like that as well like more and more with every experience I'm realizing that there's no control whatsoever um, even like I felt like even when we were here in satsang the intention was very honest to, to, to understand more to really you know I can like speak for so but however the, the words are still misunderstood and and I feel like now when I look back, I felt like I don't know if I could have changed that also. Like yeah. so, the sense of as I'm wondering that you know if there is any control whatsoever to is this I had understood it then, 
and it had it was sinking in but almost with every passing experience the sense of control is also feel like uh, like it's like I, like I don't know ultimately what's the, like what will happen in the next minute also I mean I will my intention will be there still but I don't know if life will also I don't, I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything to say that I want to share? You know, it's something for you. Yes, yes, yes. So, the same thing that I'm going on now, and it's just like, like. <laughs> I must say, this is Radha, but you can't see me. <laughs> um, it's the same thing that. It's okay. <laughs> um, the intent was very, like, you know, I was here for. But it's just the love and. I wouldn't even say like it started from fleeing from suffering, but the love developed so much there. But then somewhere this whole framework of doership went up and that's um, burning. <laughs> and like last night we had this talk and you know something is moving towards complete surrender because it just then it's that's how grace is playing here and and it there is something that wants is fighting up and saying you still have to do something, otherwise you're just completely gonna be deluded. Like, you know, this this thing is moving here and and it's there's this fear that you're gonna be completely depressed or not be able to do anything, especially because I am the mother, so I have to take care of the family and so it's not moving that way the last few weeks and we had this and I could see he was very like Yeah, and he said, like, how, how long is this going to I said, I don't know. I don't know anything. And I just, something just wants to surrender. It's, there's so much fear, but I don't, just, something just wants to surrender to it. And I felt like, he, you know, it's nice that he could talk to you because sometimes I can't, I don't have anything to say. But, and so I you know, felt like he could come to such a So, uh, and uh, good that uh, that we brought this up. And uh, uh, so, so uh, what uh, I I was uh, going through in in this particular circumstances uh, is that it seemed like we are working moving in a completely different spheres of uh, of. Uh, of understanding of uh, things. I mean, we are doing things together, but not really there. Or at least I felt she was not there. Let me put it this way. Uh, and uh, uh, and that felt like I had difficulty in understanding uh, that how when we talk about playing role, does that actually mean? Uh, that you don't play the role without the honesty uh, in being in the role and things like that. Uh, so there are there are this kind of crazy questions that the mind was bringing in, and uh, and I was trying to, I was trying two things actually. One, I was trying to kind of be neutral, and as Anantha just said, that is not possible. The mind was taking side and taking my side, of course, uh, and and. Uh, and the and the other thing was that I was thinking that uh, that uh, that okay this is uh, this is some sort of a feeling of suffering which will you know I know again maybe from concepts that I know that this would pass and and things like that and that was also going nowhere because it was not passing and uh, <laughs> and so I was stuck and. Uh, the only one I could take out was my lovely way. So that's <laughs> it. Very, very beautiful. I really appreciate the integrity and honesty with which both of you have shared. You know, um, I met Guruji in Jan 2009. And uh, I met him because I had permission from my wife 
because I worked really hard to organize this conference. So she said, okay, go. So I went. And then I, I was talking to her on the phone from Tiru after I met uh, Guruji. And I said, yes, I know you've heard the story before. But this one you have to meet. <laughs> even if you meet him once, even if you meet him just once, just come, you have to meet. I'm telling you, I know I've said this before, but this one is different. I'm telling you, just come. And I was expecting to get blasted, actually, to be honest. Because <laughs> with her also, I made it clear that I'm done with this guru business. I'm not going to follow any more gurus. I'm done with this spirituality. Because, you know, she went through all of this that you are going through. But, but somehow she said, okay, because you're saying, okay. This also will do. So then maybe two weeks or maybe ten days later after I came back, we all came back. And she came. I felt like she liked him. It was just satsang was starting. But she hated satsang. She just hated it. Because we had two small children. They were making noise. People were going shh. You know, like that, and kids don't, like, they don't keep quiet. If you tell them keep quiet, then you see what happens. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So, she was getting more and more irritated. Plus, she was not understanding everything, anything that was going on. And she's not attracted to it in this way, to, to the gyan of Advaita. She's not attracted at all. So, she is getting irritated and rallying up. You see, and I'm sitting next to her, and I could sense it, because it's your husband and wife, you know, what is, what is going on. So she's getting riled up, and I knew another two minutes, and she's out of here. <laughs> and sure enough, in two minutes, she was out. She was out of the satsang hall. I didn't know where she was gone, so something here was getting torn up. Because it was satsang, and satsang was new to me then, and it was feeling like this is where I'm meant to be. And I knew the fact that I'm not going with her must be bothering her even more. That he got me here and said, okay, I want you to meet him. But I have left the satsang hall. He's still sitting. And she's taken both the kids and she's gone. <laughs> so I don't know where she's gone with her. Because it was also possible she could have taken a cab and gone back to Bangalore. And I'm leaving. This is done. But I really didn't know what is going on. But the satsang was flowing. So we just, <laughs> it's just flowing so beautifully. So then... As I came down, walking on the stairs, Guruji had come down already first. Okay. So when I, as I came down, this is the way I remember it. Maybe Garima will have a different memory. Of it. But she was sitting, so Guruji used to come. There was a small guest house where satsang used to happen. And there was this small veranda at the ground floor. So satsang would happen on the terrace and small veranda on the ground floor. So he would come down and sit and have some chai. The sangha was small, maybe 50 people, 100 people. So, so he would come down there. So when I was coming down, I saw that she's sitting over there, distant, you know, at a distance away from where Guruji was. And as I came down, there was this old watchman who was, uh, you know, probably not had a bath for a month. His clothes were very dirty, and he was not he was not like you know presentable in any sense of the word. So he walked up to Guruji, and Guruji started hugging him and loving him like a child. And as she was, I could I saw this whole thing how it transpired. So as this was happening, then Garima was moving closer to the whole situation. She came close, and as he kept loving this old watchman and hugging him and, you know, just treating him like a baby. Something just broke through her and she started crying. She started crying and she gave him her hand and she, he held on to her hand. And that entire sense of resentment, resistance, all of that just suddenly dissolved in this expression of love that was flowing through Guruji. And she just, from that point on, I feel that she just fell in love with him and she's still in love with him. So that really helped the entire situation. So, so beautifully, Grace came and flowed like that.
But even after that, I feel it was in the naming ceremony that happened here, which you were still asking him. So, but what about you know his work and his family? Because he's just not seeming to be focused much on that. You see, and he said, what is unfolding for him here will not only be in service to all of you. Not only in service to him. It is not like a selfish thing, but also be so wonderful for all of you, all the loved ones. It cannot be that grace is only working in this selfish sort of way. Okay? So you might not recognize it right now, you see? but what you will find, even speaking phenomenally. Okay, suppose for me actually, when you come to Satsang, for me it's about you. When you come to Satsang, I don't feel your other husband. Because I am concerned about your direct seeing of the truth. Okay? So, if you remember actually, one of the first few times you came, I said, are you suffering with anything at all? You see? No. <laughs> the sense that I was suffering was just not there. You see? So then it can seem like, now, because you came into our life, or <laughs> satsang happened, and now life, it was so according to plan, is now, <laughs> now this unfolding. unfolding in this way, and I feel like I'm suffering. Easy. But what are you really saying in that? What you're really saying in that is that the potential for suffering was there. Easy. Because of my attachment to my wife, the potential for suffering was there, but because Things were going to plan, the sense of suffering was not present. Really. But the way grace works and the way the realization of the self happens is that that which has the potential to make you suffer starts showing up in double quick, triple quick time. Really. So now when I ask you, are you suffering from something? I don't even need to ask you because I can see that this this attachment to this husband-wife thing, this so-called role thing, which seems more real than a role actually right now, this is there and this is being burned. And I would say that even if it was not Radha, see, if it was not her and you came independently to satsang and you say, I'm suffering because it's hurting me what's happening to me in my relationship. See? And I would still say that it is grace. I know it is very irritating to hear initially. <laughs> you see? Because it is giving you the fuel for self-inquiry. It is giving you the momentum to look deeper. It has made you open more to seeing the truth. And you said that I try to use some words of satsang and say, okay, this too shall pass. It doesn't help. You see? Or I try to say, okay, no person is here. Nobody is the doer. None of this helps. You see? Because as long as it's just conceptual, it will not help. It has to be seen what I am. And once it's seen what I am, then you will also be able to count the blessings which are arising in your life. Okay? Because I know that nobody signs up for this. Verima didn't sign up for it. I was an atheist. I didn't sign up for this at all. I used to say God is for losers. So nobody really signs up in that way. You see? But what I can tell you is that when it becomes clear what this is, there is nobody who regrets this. You see, no one who has self-realized has gone and said, no, I would rather have been a person again. I would rather be a person with the best relationship, most money and most healthy body. Nobody even says that. You see? So, whether you like it or not, grace has signed you up for this realization. Okay. Now, if you were to talk phenomenally to anyone who comes to satsang, okay, and you say, okay, your wife doesn't come to satsang, what kind of wife would you really like? I will tell you that most would say, if my wife was realizing the truth of what she is, I would feel that it's the best gift possible for me. And I know it's not always convenient. I know it seems like it's a change or something is happening. 
you know what happened my kids are not being brought up well but basically it's a it's a sense that i am not number one in her life okay? so this can seem to cause the most hurt we can use whatever excuses we want but what really hurts the most is this sense that i used to be numero uno and now I'm, now i'm not numero uno okay? and i have to Huh? And I have to. You have to. So you can feel that because because it seems like a betrayal. It seems like a betrayal when you get married. You say that you are number one for me and I am number one for you, and this is our marriage. So when it happens that one is finding that God or Guru. Has been discovered, and it seems like you're betraying me because the deal was that I'm number one and you're number one for me. Now you're saying that all you want to talk about is God and Guruji. But what you will find is that this God or Guru that is being spoken about does not exclude you. It can seem like it is excluding me. I'm being kept out of it. But what is being discovered is that. garima or the kids all are here all of this oneness when we speak about is not just some conceptual idea of one it is truly felt like it is one okay. so it is not ex- an exclusive relationship so we are used to relationships which are exclusive you see so so these things which we have been holding on to in terms of our ideas that my wife should be like this this is what we signed up for my kids need looking after in this way um, all of these things are are examples of what many many partners go through when their partners go to satsang see but the good thing is at least you are here see at least you are here because otherwise what what can happen many times is that the fight happens outside see and then it seems like a like a struggle for the person who's coming to satsang or the feeling of the person that is still coming to satsang it seems like a struggle i'm being pulled in two directions having interacted with you it's been it's been some time that we've interacted i can also say that this realization that is happening there is also happening there it can just seem like the style is different and the expression is different okay. i know that you take the words from here and you really look at them you are not close to this you see so there is openness i know the resentment can come i know the anger can come and i know and i know the resistance can come but i can tell you that the same realization which is unfolding over there is also unfolding over there so and i can also not say that tomorrow it could be the other way around where you are like completely lost in this love for the truth and the guru and she is saying what's happening to my husband now come on you're not going to work you know where is the bills going to be paid at the end of the month from there is no money in the bank you see so it is completely possible for that also to happen although i know it can seem like a very distant idea at the moment but can you honestly tell me that you have not contemplated anything which has been shared in such time i Yes, yes, I say. Can you honestly tell me that you have not contemplated for yourself what is being shared in satsang? No, I have. You have no, exactly. No, so you will also. Some are probably mechanical, uh, conceptualized. Some I really went. Yes, and it always starts like that. See, it always starts like that. Where initially it can seem like, oh, I just have an intellectual sense of this. but then when i say what is it that is only intellectual and how is it different from your direct seen you will not be able to very easily tell me the difference you will say no it is seen also like that you see it's just that the husband role right now is coming to the fore 
and it's feeling like it's being attacked you see, from all ends. You, you, you know me for now a year or two. Does it feel like there is a bone here which could attack anything at all? Is it? There isn't. You know this actually in your heart, but it can seem like this this one is attacking you in some way because you're trying to protect this husband identity, husband relationship thing. Is it? But it is not Ananta which is attacking you. This has been role, it is grace itself which is attacking the husband role because it is not original to you. This husband identity, not the role, the husband identity is being attacked by grace itself. So just like her journey is unfolding in her own way with great beauty, your journey is also unfolding in your own way with great beauty. You see? So what is happening is that you've gone from this sense that there is no suffering in my life and it seems so just you know, chilled out, happy go lucky, whatever. <laughs> so this sense suddenly that oh now it's being threatened because you know I might be losing my wife or something like this. It is unfounded. It's completely unfounded because I have never ever ever said to anyone that you must leave your family or leave your job or leave something that you must renounce this world in some way. It can be that for a period of time, and that period of time here, if it helps you in some way, <laughs> that period of time here was about six months. Where for six months, it just felt like I'm drowning in this ocean of truth. And it seemed like to the outer world that I'm not really engaging, or I'm not really participating. You see? But it, I cannot say that in the six months, my love for my wife reduced. It only grew. My acceptance of her also grew. Really? My sense of, you know, like husband and wife, I can tell you that we used to fight every week at least once. Now, this is not giving a carrot to, <laughs> to get to the program or anything. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you from experience here that we rarely fight now, and even when the sense of fight seems to happen, it lasts only like a minute or two. It's, it's a job for you. you see, because this, you said, he said, he said, you did this, you that, that, it's much, much lighter. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that even phenomenally, even phenomenally, what unfolded here, and what is unfolding for very much also, has been very beautiful for the marriage as well. Mm -hmm. So, and this is my feeling about what is going to happen for you as well. Mm -hmm. I know that there are times which are fearful. You can see like, oh, she's just, you know, out of it and she's just, sometimes you can feel like that in satsang also, she's just, she's just out of it. And feel like, oh, what's happening with her? You know? These thoughts will always come. You see? So as a husband, I can imagine that it must be really strong. Am I losing my life? You are not losing your wife. You are finding yourself. I read this so that the, uh, the few times initially I came, it was not for checking up. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. It's not, exactly. It's not that. It's not that. Exactly. It's very good. I don't mind actually. Even if it was that, I don't mind that at all because, of course, well, any loving husband should go check up what his wife is doing. It's very natural. I feel it's very natural. And vice versa. So, <laughs> No, so, so tomorrow if you start going to some satsang, I feel very good. Rather should go and check what's happening. Who is this? You see, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is that I know it was not just to check because I know that some things have been heard, some things have been contemplated, and your journey towards the truth of what you are. Although your mind might be saying, "Okay, she's running far ahead of me," it's not like that. It doesn't have to be like that. Just because the expression is like this, doesn't mean there is some sign of more progress or less progress. So, this, what is unfolding for her, will not harm your relationship. It will not harm you. It, she will not leave you. She will still function very naturally in the relationship. And you will find there is great beauty because there is 
without need and without expectation, without the burden of living up to this and that, you will find that what flows through both of you is so beautiful. So, so that much I am very clear about. But what I am prodding you is to go, so I could have just said this, you know, you are Shamak, the husband, and I want to reassure you that nothing happened to your wife, just give her some space, it will unfold, and it unfolded here also, like this, it will unfold beautifully. So I could have just said that and reassured you and said, oh, everything will be okay, you don't worry, like that. But I don't want to do that. I want you to use this also as an opportunity for your own inquiry. You feel like I'm losing something. Can you find the I that is losing something? Not as homework. Even now, can you find? You could there's a question there. Well you may hear something. <laughs> it's not. It's not. You see, take this further. Take this further. Don't settle for these answers. In here somewhere there is a person. No, there is not. I am saying no, there is not. I will give you a thousand dollars if you show me there. You know this deal has been there, you see. So, so if you are clear that it is there, why not claim the thousand dollars? Maybe not big money, but not bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yes, exchange rate and your rupees falling. So, thousand dollars is fair amount of money. So, yes. use these opportunities to inquire because I can see that life is pushing you in that direction. So don't resist the inquiry, because the more you resist, the more life will push. You see? This movement towards becoming open is happening. Then it doesn't just stop. <laughs> so that's why I'm happy you come to Satsang. And don't settle for any mental answers, especially things like, but it's there, no, that guy is still there somewhere inside. Yeah. And even if it is, even if you are saying there is somewhere inside me, there is that person, then who are you inside which the person is there? So I see this way that, and I can immediately understand that if there is suffering, then there is someone there. The idea of someone there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, exactly. that has been in my mind. Very good. I did not Very really. Good. As I said, I kind of hit a dead end there, uh, trying to, let's say, grace take over or something like that, and then it just didn't happen. So. All that is happening in your life now is leading you towards the finding of the true self that you are. And I know that the mind could be coming and saying, but you know, this is not my journey. Or at least it could be my journey, but for me, I planned it to be a long-term journey. Do this, and then do this, and do this, and maybe then I have enough, I've achieved enough, I've done enough, and you know, my kids are grown up, then I could really focus on this. You see? But you know what, what the joke is, right? The way to make God laugh is to tell them your plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, So it doesn't go according to plan. And if there is a sense that it is because of this satsang that this fire has been created in your life, then I'm happy to take credit for that actually. Because I know that ultimately this fire is good for you. It is opening you out, it is making you more open to the inquiry of the self. Because if you remember what I told you the first time, so that when you said there is no suffering, then I said that usually, you know, there is some fuel which is used to fuel the inquiry. It is the, sometimes it is the urge to find yourself itself which is causing so much suffering that is used to, used to use for the inquiry. But, but if you feel that because of how this satsang is or what has been said here, there has been some fire like this which has been created in your life and you know you're it added to some sort of suffering. I'm okay even to take credit for that or blame as you would call it. <laughs> you see? But I can tell you that from the way that I'm looking at it, the way I'm seeing this, this is going to unfold in you discovering the same truths. 
which the rest of the Sangha is discovering. Not according to your plan, but according to the plan. <laughs> now, what happens is that just like this, you feel that okay, she is being a terrible mother and a terrible wife, which I find also a little bit difficult to believe because I'm, I've seen that you know when when these things are unfolding, also at least the basics are taken care of. So, so maybe she's not being as great a mom and wife as she used to be, or something like this. We can that much I can grant you, but. But life always provides enough life force for naturally what is meant to happen to still unfold. Now that might not live live up to our expectations, and that can be that the sense that you know this is not being done properly, or my wife is no longer interested in me, or something like this. So when these thoughts are coming, then you use them for your inquiry. Because your natural state, because this is strong identity, no? you might not even have realized a few months ago that husband identity is so strong. Okay. Huh? Isn't it? So you find now that the sense, oh, because this fear is there, I'm losing my wife. You see how strong the husband identity is. You see that this sense of fear of losing something is so strong that it comes up here. Okay. So who is the husband? Who is the one that has some expectations about how the wife should be? And you'll see, like you said, if there is suffering because of it, you find the person, the person idea at the root of it. So it will not be that, you know, when I'm done playing the husband role, when I'm done playing the work role, when I'm done playing the father role, then life will give me the space one day to just be spiritual. Not like that. It's never ending. But now it's kids, later it will be grandkids. There always attachments to be found in this So I would say that it's a great, great, great unfolding and a great opportunity, to use Jyotika's words, to actually look. What is happening? Who is it happening to? Is it real? Is it that bad what is unfolding? And this Complete some of this, and you will find that I have never, there is no person here, there is no husband here at all. And it could be this, you know, for you it could be instant noodles, you never know. If you look and you drop the husband identity, then it could be Radha tomorrow who comes and says, What did you tell him? You know, now he's not even going to work, no, he's not even. Taking care of me, you know, he just said whatever. Don't <laughs> But I know that that which is leading to the realization of the self cannot be bad for you, for her, for the kids, anyone. And one day you will also admit this. You will say that it is this. I can say with confidence now because every time I've said this, it has happened. So I know that although it can seem like my life is getting messed up in all of this, it is not true. Because as you realize the self, you will not ask for the old chamik back. You will not ask for the old identity again. I went on for quite a bit, huh? <laughs> The seeming switchover between being and mind can seem to 
cause some of these turbulence. As we are leaving the mind behind and switching to this, this sense of being, then you can, the mind will not give up without a fight. Whatever resistance is possible against uh, me, against Guruji, against anyone, against spirituality, Advaita, all the masters, everything possible will come. It's very natural for it to come. So, and anytime you're exceptionally irritated with me, you're free to give me a call and you're free to unload and unwind. <laughs> <laughs> if there is some. <laughs> In general, it's it's actually the other way around. I, I think, I mean, typically I I seem to be feeling that she is not using the lesson properly. Ah. <laughs> it's not you yes, yes, or something. Yes. It's that. Yes, this can also. This is a good point also. But you are getting late for work, <laughs> so you realize you can see the recording of what I said to this because this is a good point. Okay. Actually, that's good. Better. Thank you. Take my can you move the screen a bit? We can't see you very well. It's okay. What time did we start? 11. 11. Yeah, we're on two hours now. See, the plan was to have Sangha sharing. But that's the thing about plan. No, sorry, it's very beautiful. I felt it was very beautiful and very real. Because this is what the sense can be that we are just talking about some abstract thing. Really, when someone comes new to satsang, the sense could be someone watching from YouTube new first time today. The sense can be, oh, all these people are just talking. And is it really true that they have seen this for themselves or it's just words they've heard? But then to see something so real like this, that a husband and wife are sharing that this is what's with such beautiful integrity, I feel it is worth gold more than what any other sharing could have been. It's very, very good. It's like this also, Garima came up in the retreat, you remember? And uh, many found it very beautiful. But she just came and said, I have this question, and she told me the question the previous night. So I said, okay, you want to ask me satsang, you ask. So she came and said, are you my husband or my guru? <laughs> Beautiful satsang unfolded because of that. So this is very welcome. I think it's very, very good because it's this integrity I love. I love him. But it is unfolding also for him. The truth will reveal itself to him. I know the mind will use whatever to. And Oh yes, I wanted to speak a little about that. You know, not just my wife, but my kids use that against me. They use it. If I shout at them, they say, Pa ego. <laughs> my, my son also had this hand sign where you point a E like this. Wow, this is just ego. You're telling me to do this. It's just ego. When he was very young, he started doing it. You see, this is one of the tricks of the mind. Like that, it can play. That, and also, it's very beautiful. Because it, say ego, it gives you an instant inquiry. No? An instant inquiry which is appearing in the outside. So, Karima has used it for many years to say this, that, oh, with um, Tatsang people, you're like this, with me, you're like this. I like this. In fact, the last time she said it, something really hit home. It was maybe six months ago, she said like this, that, you know, if I was someone who came to Satsang and I said the same thing to you, your reaction would have been different. Why is that? And I heard it many times before and said, whatever, that the rule is being like this. But this time when she said it, it just hit home. I said, she is absolutely right. That this conditioning of husband is still here. Even in spite of all these words, the husband condition is still here. You see, till six months ago, I, when I looked at it and said, yes. If it was fresh, just appearing in front of me, someone came and said, like this, like this, like this, I would have been something different response, different kind of behavior. And I felt it was beautiful contemplation and beautiful looking that happened because of that. 
So even when it happens like this, I know it pokes for a second. You see, because it is a fear that might be here. That am I really using it well? So when it is comes from the outside, I you really heard anything in such and this too? Even I know. You see, not with so much arrogance, but can decide when the fire to bring on. You know, that you are not being the self. You are not being the truth. And suddenly you are to know where. So that is used as a sword to win. But even that cannot take you away from the truth of what you are. So even when this comes like this, it is used as instant inquiry and drop. So don't resist even this. Let the world say, let everyone say you have not understood anything. You have no. Understanding of the point, you are just deluding yourself. All this rubbish can come from the world. You see, and the mind, the same rubbish, which can come from the mind, can come from the world. Mm -hmm. And don't fight, don't resist any of that. That is a part of your surrender. Mother, I feel like there is no place for inquiry anymore. I just feel like there is no place where the self can be understood. Not even this conclusion. I know that again, this this can can be fodder for your mind. You feel, but not even if something is fodder to the mind, you are resisting. You see, now you are getting to very subtle, subtle territory. Sometimes I can't make out now that my mind is inquiring, or if, if I'm like it's just it's it's not like I intuitively just feel to like everything comes. Yes. Yes. And. It's there's so much fear, but yes. just let everything. So when come. we say let everything come, that's exactly what I'm saying. That we cannot even make the conclusion that I find here that there is no space for inquiry because then you never know next moment what might come is the inquiry. Mm -hmm. So not even this conclusion, not even this. I know it's like completely confusing to the mind. So just. I don't know anything at all. Next moment, I could be singing a bhajan, or I could be asking who am I, or I could be doing some other work, or I could be getting angry. Whatever is whatever. Yeah, because all these concepts are there. Any action that's going on, the mind is doing. Yeah. Chatting, chatting, chatting. We can't hear her. So when she's talking to you, Father, we can't hear a word she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> So have to go. <laughs> My kids will be back home. I don't want to go home. <laughs> she is basically basically saying that anything which is uh, like heard as a practice, the mind takes it on in a big way. So everything is dropped. Everything is dropped. Like even the other day, Amber had this video. You have to stop, and that was something that was so fearful. Like I'm not doing it. You know, this is so burdensome. Like, and somewhere into the day, when this drops, I just like when she was saying, I could just so relate. This whole box of seeker is a pain in the neck. Yes, pain in the neck. <laughs> and it's just I'm grateful for this because. The mind, like, like going to say that like, I'm not just doing that. I completely like I'm going to go to this, and it feels like I'm just completely going to this place. I want to be lying on bed forever, and the mind is not going to stop forever. It's just giving me all that. And all this, that which we call coming, we can also call. I have no idea what you're saying. This is.
Welcome. Ah, there's so much chat. <laughs> I don't feel I have that energy now too. I just want to end with one story. You know, we have a friend in the in the sangha, in the Muji sangha, who got into a relationship with another friend in the sangha, and he was staying with me for a few days. So he said, "You know, Ananta, it was so beautiful. That grace brought us together so beautifully. Everything was unfolding with such grace." Now look what has happened. Look at the state of the relationship. It's so badly messed up. But I said that that we did that coming together is also doing this. And what is unfolding for you is the realization of what you are, independent of any relationship. This doesn't mean that the relationship is bad. The relationships can still continue, but the sense of need and desperation about holding on to something which is ultimately just an appearance and has to go one way or the other, one day or another. So that which, so sometimes the mind comes and says, "See, that was so beautiful when Grace did that, and that which is not seemingly so full of bliss and joy, that we can seem like, oh, the person is responsible either here or another person. No, it is still Grace. It is still Grace which is doing everything. So why is it doing like this? Any time we." Fall into identity. We fall into attachments because we have made this prayer either overtly or not. But coming into satsang, we have made this prayer that may I discover the truth of what I am, and may that which is false be burnt away. And when the false is burning, it is bound to create some moments which seem like they are painful, but it is only an answer. To what has been prayed for. I just want to say that I love all of you so, so, so very much. And I feel blessed every moment. I feel blessed to be surrounded with this beautiful sangha. I feel that after my master's feet, it is the presence of this sangha which is the greatest gift in my life, greatest joy to be with you all. And I know that many of you, many of us will meet while we are in Rishikesh, and some of you are not able to come. But irrespective of that, there is not one millimeter of distance in our hearts.
and love, love, love all of you. May we forever be at my father's feet. And this is a great moment of celebration and joy because we get to experience his satsang for five weeks almost non stop. And every season, every time, even now, when I go, some fresh insight, a fresh scene emerges. So I'm forever grateful to my master, my father, Sadhguru Shri Mudiji, for allowing his words to be spoken here for his presence and his love. I'm so thankful to all of you, this beautiful Sangha of being. All my love and blessings. We you all find this truth which is ever present. May my master's grace bring all auspiciousness into your lives and to the lives of your loved ones. Thank you all so much for being such beautiful children, best friends, brothers and sisters. I'm so, so, so grateful. Thank you all so much for being in satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Mujiji Ki Jai. Sadhguru Shri Anta Ji Ki Jai. Jay. I know I didn't read out many of the chat messages, but I will read them all before I go. <laughs> Thank you, my loves. It's a joy to have Parvati as the moderator. Thank you, my dearest, for moderating today. And we can end the broadcast now. Mm -hmm.